So let me start describing the Swayam components. Basically, any MOOC usually have two major portions. The entire thing will be set up on a cloud. Cloud is nothing but a server farm and it is accessed through internet by students. So this is learner 1 to number n. And these learners could be whatever, 10,000, 20,000, 2 lakhs. And it's not uncommon for India in two years, for example, for one popular school to have as many as 10 lakh students. These are the kind of numbers that our country needs to be handled. In exactly the same fashion, on internet are connected a set of institutions and within that the teachers. So effectively there are two kinds of teachers. One set of teachers who design courses. So they are course designers. And the other set of teachers who run courses. They could be same, but they could also be different. This Swayam itself has two major components. One is called the course management system. abbreviated CMS. In Swayam terms, it is called the studio. The studio is a component which we shall be using in the major part of our activities in the first two days. Using this studio component, we design courses. Using these studio components, we insert new courses. We define what would be the start date or end date of a course. Using this studio, we can clone courses. That means one course has been designed by someone. Now we want to offer it. Again, we can make a copy of that course and say that this course shall run from this date to this date. We shall see those components first. This studio is almost an exclusive component. It is never seen by students. It is seen only by the course staff and course teachers and it is seen by the system administrators. So we will assign uh, login IDs to all the people from each university who will be doing the course design and their staff giving them what we call admin access to those courses. So this is largely seen and handled by the teachers who are course designers and course, I will say offerers for a better name, teachers who offer the course. To begin with, it will be the same set of teachers who design the course, they will also offer it for the first time. There is a team, as I shall explain briefly, to run the course, also to design the course. The second part or component of this system is the learning management system. Or what is also known as LMS. And this is the main Swayam site. Although it is not yet hosted, on 25th when the site is launched, the site ID will be swayam.ac.in. This domain has been registered. The registration happened yesterday morning. Then what we call the DNS server, domain name servers are being set up as we speak. And this site will be ready. Today this site does not lead to anything. But this shall be the main site. Now, our job over the next three days is primarily to fa familiarize ourselves completely 
with the CMS part and also to understand that when a course runs, how will a student see that? Now, luckily the studio part and the LMS part, I can move up while I am designing a course. If I want to see the course live, how will it look like? I can actually switch. Uh, Brinda, correct me if I am wrong. I can go to the main site and see how the course will look like there. And I can come to my dashboard. A teacher has an access to the studio through what is known as a dashboard. The dashboard provides various features. We shall see them briefly. So in a nutshell, I will design a course using CMS. I can define when the course will go live. You will see the meaning of start date and end date or duration, etc., etc. I can design the course now to be released in, say, December, third week or any specified day. On that date, the course will be visible to the entire world. So on this side and this side, they are intrinsically interconnected internal. Whatever we define here gets populated in the databases here. If we make any change here, it gets populated here. For example, if I had designed a quiz to be taken, in the third week of October by students. And just one day prior to that third week, I realized that that quiz has a mistake. The quiz is not yet seen by the world, but it is designed and kept ready here. I can make changes, and those changes will be reflected immediately. Typical time required for reflection between this site and this site is less than a minute. So as long as you make any changes before the deadline, one minute before the deadline and post it, it will be reflected here. We have done that ourselves on the main site, so we are familiar with it. In our case, it will be instantaneous because both these components are loaded onto the same cloud here. So there is a replication which happens internally, which happens instantly. Now, whether you are a student or a teacher, first time you have to register yourself. Okay, I will show you that registration page. This is something which we not tampered with. So there is no bulk registration facility. That means first thing you will have to go or do after you go to the lab today is to register yourself on Swayam. So there is basically a common registration for the Swayam system. And this registration has to be done by each individual person. So let us try and do that registration on the Swayam component. Yeah. Uh, is there someone amongst the participants whose email is easily accessible? Why don't you come here and register? The easiest thing to do. Live demo. You have to choose a password. Is something that you are familiar with? Huh? Yes. And repeat that if you want. You have to choose. Ah, now this is something, uh, Aadhaar ID. We, uh, no, so I'll tell you why we included it. Not now, but eventually, when we actually try to get these students, uh, in fact, my entire paper, which I will circulate to all colleagues, is on the blended MOOCs precisely for this purpose. The primary motivation of students to register is to get an help on scoring better marks in the similar course that they are doing in their own university. Ideally, they should get the grade that they obtain on a MOOC course to be recognized by their university for their own registered course. That is the ultimate. We are working with UGC to make a recommendation to universities that towards a degree program, they should permit a certain amount of credits. We have suggested 15 to 20 percent to be earned by students using MOOCs. Now, that has been pending for last six months. UGC also takes its own time to take a decision. But eventually, that may happen. When that happens, the minimum that the university system will insist 
is that the examinations which are given by students online be supervised and proctored. Otherwise, how can I guarantee that they have done so? Now, to add one more element of verification for such people who will do supervised exam, who will undergo supervised examination, we thought Aadhaar would be an ideal. So, we have included Aadhaar. Currently, although it shows the star, it is not mandatory. So, you just type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Actually, I typed the same example which they are given, 5, 5, 5, 5, 4, 4, 4, 4, 3. I don't know how many digits. It doesn't matter. You can press return and see it should work. Yeah. No, no, there are, there are several issues there. Ideally, a course on the MOOCs should run parallelly along with the other thing. But the different university timetables in the country are vastly different. For example, in, in West Bengal, during puja days, nothing happens. Okay. There are different regional elements like this. So, we have not yet figured out how best it will be done. Okay. Most, but the, and this is another important observation commensurate with his question. Globally, the record of the number of students who register for online courses and those who complete such a course, the completion rate is this one, is between 3 to 11 percent. So, if 1 lakh students register for a course, 10,000 students complete the course on an average. Now, on one side it is very bad, only 10 percent complete. But on the other side, look at it this way. Your course would ordinarily never benefit even 10,000 people. And it is not that the remaining 90,000 are not benefiting, but we do not know to the extent that they are benefiting. So, there are elements in the learning management system which gives you complete data on which student has done what quizzes and so on because the grades and other things are available and there is a huge amount of analytics that can be done. Uh, sir, Aadhaar is I think very useful to give unique identity to each student because yeah. otherwise there yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. are no, So, we have added that but we do not know what uh, feature it will take. See, look at it this way. We conduct examinations for crores of students without Aadhaar number. How do we do that? We verify using the identity card. So, at the minimum, the identity card will be there. But we have, and all this will happen only when the university, through some recommendation or advisory from UGC, accepts that my students who are registered for a course in Economics 1 paper can get this grade from Economics 1 taught by Delhi University. So that will take quite some time, as you know, that system. For the public name, which will appear in discussion forums and so on, I will first show you briefly the component of the Swayam, which is the learning management system, which is what the students will see. So, here are various courses. Here is one course, for example, which is the CS101.1X, which just concluded for global offering. Uh, tomorrow, Professor Gayatonde will give you examples from ME209X, which is the other course which is running here. If I click on this, it says enrollment is closed, but this has an overview. As I told you, we have created four courses, 101A, 101B, 101C, 101D. So, let me explain the 101A Swayam demonstration course. You have to register for 101A, 101B, 101C. So, there are two registrations. One registration is for the Swayam. And the second registration is for any course that you wish to choose. However, here we are blessed by a facility called bulk registration. So, once one teacher is appointed for a course which is done by the system administrator, then that teacher can add people, both the staff as well as uh, the students. Now, here already been registered. So, this is one course which shows the overview of the course. You can give the prerequisites for the course. Somebody was saying that if there are prerequisites, I would have mentioned them in designing and they will appear here. The course staff is listed here. These are of course dummy things. So, those of you who will become the course staff, their photographs and some description should appear here. Okay. There are frequently asked questions which should appear for every course. There could also be additional material that is given. The course, the start date is defined as September 9, classes end on this date. 